It is the 108th Milan San Remo, the first of the year's monuments, 291 kilometers. And as you can see from uh, the sea down below us here, it is pretty calm today. Peter Zagan is out and out favorite as the world champion starts this race, but plenty of others are there to challenge him, of course. Dangerous moment, here is that transition. So that's the start of the climb, essentially, for these guys, and everyone else has got to fit into that gap. It's gonna be difficult, here we go. Big kick off the inside, everyone spat over to the left-hand side of the road. And who's gonna be tempted to reach out for glory here? Well, they continue to grind into this, and, and why not? A uh, fantastic push rolling in. Tim Wellens decides uh, that it's time to, to kick on and goes for it. Now, Tim Wellens from this sort of distance is very dangerous and almost catching out the motorcycle here who was on that hairpin, really struggled to get around the corner. Well, the job that Dumoulin's doing here now is just to try and eliminate as many sprinters as possible. And even if you don't eliminate them, at least put the hurt on their legs so that they've got a diminished sprint at the end. Because as I said, Michael Matthews, of all of the climbers, oh, sorry, all of the sprinters is one of the better climbers. The trouble that they and everybody else has got is Peter Sagan. The way he's riding up this climb yeah. at the moment, he looks, he's making it look so easy. And I can tell you that this has been a tremendously high pace all the way up the Cipressa so far. 22.7 kilometers remaining. Very good riding by Bora Handgrower here. We often see uh, Sagan slightly isolated at this point in big races, but they've still got two riders there in front of him. And they've been very crucial uh, this last couple of minutes in making sure that they got to the front quick, smart, and didn't allow this uh, small attack to go too far up the road. In fact, it's been caught now. Great job, Bora Hansgrohe. Need to stay vigilant towards the front now and keep Pete Sagan up there, but he's looking incredibly good, Sagan. I've uh, three as well from uh, Team Lotto Yumbo, and here we go. Uh, Peter Sagan just picks it up off the front. In fact, we're uh, drifting away from it. It's Colbrelli that tries to stay with him. Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, just behind as well, Felina is also involved, but Sagan here, is, this is his big role right now. He doesn't. He wants to bring this one home alone, <laughs> and he might well just do it. Viviani, I think the alarm bells have gone off, and Alaphilippe is also trying to stay with him at the moment kicking off and trying to sail into this void, but they can't do it. In fact, uh, it's Kwiatkowski who's trying to mark him out at the moment, I beg your pardon. But Sagan still goes, the power of the man, and he's pouring it on everyone at the moment. 5.9 to go. Who's going to get the drop? Kwiatkowski's going to try and go over the top, but how do you jump a man like the world champion? Not if I've got anything to do with it, he says. He powers into the line. Sagan the Great, Peter the Great. Is he going to make it stick? Kwiatkowski tries to come around the outside. Kwiatkowski's there. They bunch up. Kwiatkowski out of the Oh, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you at the line. That was incredible. Either Kwiatkowski or Sagan, I think. It's Kwiatkowski who got him at the very last. The man who won the Strata Bianchi. What a finish! It could be any of them. And here they are. Kwiatkowski takes it ahead of uh, Peter Sagan and Julian Alaphilippe. Five seconds back. Christoph with Gaviria, uh, the out and out favourite, some said today, possibly alongside Sagan. Mikhail, of course. And he has taken a huge victory here. Former world champion, of course. He's really refound his mojo, winning Stradibianchi. And now, the Milan San Remo.